Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let's take a look at the new date and time object in the Apple Office apps. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. Now there's a new feature in Pages, Numbers, and kind of in Keynote called Date and Time. Now if you look in Pages and you're using the latest version, so that's version 13.1, you'll find it under Insert, Date and Time. But wait a minute. This was there before. You could go to the same place, the same menu, choose this, and it would simply insert the date and time as some text. And that's what it seems to still do now. But it's different now. It's changed. This isn't just plain text now. This is an actual object. Look what happens when I move my pointer over it and click. It selects the entire thing even though I've just clicked on one letter in it and it comes up with this little dialog here that I can use to change it. I can change the format and I have a variety of formats I can choose from and I can click on the bottom right here and use a date and time picker to actually change the date. I could change the time. Then you can see it's reflected up here. I also have a button set to now which will change it to be exactly right now. And then notice this other thing called Update All Fields. We'll look at that in a second. But for now it's just interesting that this is an object. It's a single element here. It's still in your text. If I were to delete it and then put uh, something and then insert the date and time and then something else after it I could select it all and I could do something like change the font size or type or style or whatever. And it changes with the rest of the text just as normal. But this is still a separate object right here. Instead of going in and editing individual characters, you can see I can move my cursor back with the left arrow key and then I get here and I do it one more time and it sucks the entire thing another time and it's before it. It's just one object now. So you have this ability to change it and you know, let's change it to like this format right here and you can see it works like that. So it's different than just inserting the date and time. Now something else happens that's a little different. If I put another line and then insert date and time again right here, you can see it uses that default format there. I can go in and I can change the format on this one to something else. Let's do full date and time like that. All right, let's change it to like another day and another time. And then I could set it to now again and you can see it sets it back. If I update all fields, it will update everything with this date and time. So let's change it to another date there like that, the 29th. Update all fields. It changes this to the 29th. So it updates all of the date and time objects throughout my entire document. Which is kind of interesting. It makes you wonder what this is meant for and think that it's probably meant for something where there's a date and time associated with the entire document. Like you would maybe usually use this in the header or footer. I could put here in the header for instance I can click on that and it gives me the insert page number box there but I can just as easily go to insert date and time and you can see now it's up there. And now when I double click on it like that. I can change it to another format like that and I can include this date elsewhere. Like you know, here I've got this set to another date. I could have it, uh, if I click there, update all fields and you can see how it updates this one to that. So say if you had different sections with different headers, maybe you had different places where you mentioned that, that this document is up to date uh, as of this specific time and you had that like in seven different places throughout your document, it's an easy way to update all seven of those places. But you don't want to use that update all fields if you're putting a different date and time in different date and time objects because it will update them all and you'll lose the data of whatever the date and time was for that specific object. Um, I guess if you do it by accident you can undo. I'll just do Command Z here and you can see how it undoes that. So uh, if you do make the mistake there is at least that chance if you realize it to go back. So you've got this interesting object here. It can be uh, formatted just like anything else like I showed before. You can set a uh, character style for it. So I can set like the emphasis character style like that and if I change the emphasis style it will change this. Um, so it works just like other pieces of text. It's just this kind of inline special object that can be used in the body text. It can be used in headers and footers. It can be used in text boxes. Uh, it can be used anywhere. You use text really. 
and that's in Pages. Now if we go to Numbers you have the same thing. You've got Insert, Date and Time and that was there before as well. And just like before you have to be editing text for this to be active. So I just have a cell selected. So normally with a cell I could start typing something and just press a key and it starts inputting text there. But if I just click on it like that you're not quite yet in text input mode. So the Insert Date and Time is not active. But if I double click on it and you can see the blinking cursor now I am in text input mode and now I can do Insert Date and Time and now I get this special object and I could do the same thing with it. I'm going to have it in multiple places, set time to now, update all fields, the works. What's weird about it in Numbers is this isn't recognized as a date and time. It's recognized as text. You can see here at the bottom left. If I go to Cell, change the data format to date and time. So unrelated things that have the same name. This is a cell formatting a date and time as opposed to insert date and time, the menu item. Then it will change this and make it an actual value of this date here. So it's a little awkward to use this in numbers. It's pretty much not really for entering data into cells. It's more for entering you know, data into, into maybe text boxes, headers, footers, that kind of thing. Uh, stuff that has to do with identifying the document, not actually having data in cells. Now if I undo back to having it like this, you can see it's a data object like that. Let's go and change this. Um, and you can see it's now in that format and still thinks it's just text. Uh, I could you know, copy and paste this to different cells like that. And you can see these are all just pieces of text. If I go in here, double click and change uh, the time, let's uh, say I change the date to the 22nd here and then update all fields, you can see it's kind of buggy. It doesn't update the other ones or does it? Because if I go into here and double click on them it does change it. So it's almost like numbers cells themselves, the code for that is conflicting with this date and time object and it's not really working quite perfectly in numbers. It gets even weirder if you go into Keynote. In Keynote you think this might be a good place to put a date and time. I'm going to put like down here uh, in this field here my name and the date and time you know, for this presentation. And I go to Insert and I can't find date and time anywhere. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's any way to insert it. The feature is just not available in Keynote. Or is it because if I go to Pages here and I select say you know, this date and time right here like that, I'm going to do Command C for copy and then I'm going to switch back to Keynote and in here I'm going to do Command V to paste. It pastes it in. Now is that plain text? No, actually if you click on it, look, it's a date and time object in Keynote. There just doesn't seem to be a way to create it in Keynote but you can copy and paste it from Pages into Keynote. So that's kind of interesting. So some other notes here. One is that another way to get to this uh, and add date and time is to use the Insert button in the toolbar. And you can see date and time is right there. Um, you could of course also go to uh, Insert Date and Time. That's just a menu item. You could add a keyboard shortcut in System Settings Keyboard for that. So if it's something you need to use a lot you can create your own keyboard shortcut. Um, the formats here like this uh, month, day, year, 6, 15, 23 in this case. You would think, oh, that would obey the system setting for date formats. So if I set this to be uh, day, month, year, it should be 15, 6, 23. But not in my tests. My tests changing the system setting didn't change this. I just have these formats and no way to customize them uh, and they don't obey the system setting. So, you know, kind of a useful feature, but uh, you keep in mind if it doesn't work for you, you can still just type the date and time and, you know, put it in whatever format you want. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.